Hello students, I'm Dr. Puneet Bhojani here and welcome to a clinical case-based scenario discussion. This discussion, what we will do will help MBBA students for their uh, practical examination as well as theoretical examination and also help the NEET PG aspirants because this kind of questions could be asked to you. So let us discuss first the case. What is the case? A 33 year old female has come to us, she's married since three years and she comes to the OPD with the complaints of inability to conceive. Last menstrual period was five days ago, present menstrual cycle, three bleeds for three to four days, around 35 to 45 days is the cycle uh, interval duration. Husband is 35 years, has desk job, smokes and no investigation done till now. Now we have to approach this case very systematically. In your viva also they could ask you how will you approach the case, what is to be done. This is a typical case sheet which many of you will get during your final year uh, university exams. And a clinical case based MCQ also can come on this in your NEET PG and AIMS examination. Now they are married since 3 years and she has come to us with complaints of inability to conceive. Okay, so this is a case of infertility. Okay, because infertility is defined as inability to conceive in spite of 1 year of regular unprotected intercourse. So they have been trying to conceive but they are not able to conceive. You would, how you would proceed further is I will be discussing. Uh, today in this uh, session where what all investigations and what all will to be done they have no investigations done till now okay now let us think one thing at a time 33 years old okay so age is also slightly on the higher side but uh, in females uh, till 30 25 to 30 years the fertility is very good after 30 the fertility starts dropping and uh, after 35 the fertility further drops okay and they have come to us with complaints of infertility now the another thing to be kept in mind is if you look at the history the cycles are irregular she is saying 35 to 45 days irregular periods okay so this also is to be kept in mind so first i'm just taking out the positive points from the history so that you come to know so bleeding for three to four days but cycle is 35 to 45 days which is definitely irregular okay regular periods tells us that patient is ovulating so it are irregular periods so that you would like to investigate Plus overall no investigations have been done and husband is also a smoker so that also are the pointing things to be kept in mind. Now how will you proceed further? So we have to divide this systematically into two things that what will I do for the female and what will I do for the male. Okay, male partner, female partner and how anything further would you like to ask in the history. So generally when a patient is of infertility, so first of all we should ask in this patient also that have they ever conceived before so if we have to ask about there anything in the past obstetric history whether the patient is nulliparous that means she has never conceived till now or she has conceived before okay so if she's never conceived then it becomes a case of primary infertility okay if she says that doctor she had conceived immediately after marriage uh, at that time she uh, went to mtp or she had a spontaneous miscarriage or abortion or something of that sort then that is becomes a case of secondary infertility so first you need to find out whether this is a case of primary infertility or secondary infertility okay she is inability to conceive so probably they have not mentioned about the obstetric history in the case but it looks like she is an early paris patient so she is going to be primary infertility management wise treatment wise does not going to uh, differ much okay now we start with the basic thing we have to take the height of the patient the weight of the patient and also do the bmi okay so height weight bmi this is first the basic thing what you ask in the clinical examination okay now irregular periods which are there so height weight bmi because bmi could be on the higher side okay so bmi could be increased and then you might have to tell the patient to lose some weight before planning a baby okay now there are irregular periods so two three things common things okay TSH thyroid stimulating hormone should be done because thyroid disorders can cause irregular periods and even prolactin prolactin can also cause the periods to become irregular so first I'm discussing the blood work what you would want to do for the patient so any patient it's always good that any patient who comes to us with planning a baby a thyroid could be done prolactin should be done if it's irregular periods why because the prolactin is on the higher side that will cause galactoria okay galactoria may or may not be there 
so in the examination you can do the breast disc examination and see if there is any discharge coming from the nipple clear fluid or milky white secretions that could also suggest high prolactin levels because prolactin on the higher side will definitely or can cause irregular period and thyroid disorders both hypo hyper can also cause irregular periods okay apart from that it's always good to do blood sugar examination because only if the sugars are under control then the patient should be allowed to conceive you yeah, you will i'll teach you in my diabetes in pregnancy class where if the sugars are not normal and the patient conceives there can be a lot of complications in the first trimester and baby can have anomalies and defects so it's always good that blood sugar should be under control okay and also you would want to start the patient on a very conceptional folic acid supplementation okay so we have to do one thing at a time evaluation what needs to be done is that to give you an idea okay for the female to conceive okay so three things okay so for the female to conceive the husband deposits the sperms over here the egg the sperms travel all the way over here patient ovulates from the ovary then the egg comes over here egg and the sperm unite over here and then the pregnancy travels back so basically systematically one thing so husband you need to sperm count should be normal so for husband definitely you will tell the husband to stop smoking because she is a smoker smoker smoking will affect the sperm count as well as the motility of the count and the morphology so smoking you should tell the husband to stop smoking okay you would also more likely to ask them about the frequency of coitus coitus frequency because many many patient with corporate stress anxiety job pressure the freq sexual frequency is very very less so that also you should know and ask them and whether during intercourse is there any pain in the male partner female partner specifically the female concept uh, uh, complains of pain during intercourse that this peronia deep this peronia is one of the signs of endometriosis okay so frequency of coitus should also be uh, inquired uh, and husband you will definitely tell to stop smoking and husband we will do semen analysis so please understand that we need to focus on both the partners in the exam they will ask you what you will start the investigation don't only say i will like to investigate the female we would like to investigate both the partners simultaneously because you do all the investigation of female and then you come to know oh husband had a problem with the sperm count or husband was having azuspermia so for husband semen analysis has to be done that should be the most basic investigation the first investigation semen analysis if it's normal very good if it's abnormal then accordingly you need to treat the patient for females i need to rule out ovarian factor whether the ovaries how is it ovaries how is the functioning okay the tubes have to be evaluated and the uterus has to be evaluated so because you could have uterine factor tubal factor and ovarian factor responsible for infertility here because the periods are irregular definitely from the history itself you can come to know that we are doing we are dealing with most probably that's one of the probable thing that if there are irregular periods we are definitely uh, dealing with a ovulatory disturbance okay that probably the female is not ovulating properly so ovulatory disturbance is there okay so what all i would like to do okay so in this patient as i told you first the routine blood work we would be doing tsh and prolactin and sugars even a hemoglobin can be done so these are all the blood investigation which i do for the female special investigations okay they will ask you that if in case you will in the clinical history you will look for the weight if the weight is on the higher side then acne does the patient have acne does the patient have hirsutism yes yes very simple what is all this pointing to yes then it could be a case of pcos because ovulatory disturbance is there pcos is the most common cause of an ovulation okay an ovulation pcos is the most common cause okay and along with that patient has got acne hirsutism so features of hyperandrogenism so that could point out to pcos and on the weight gain if the weight is on the higher side should tell the patient to lose some weight okay so systematically what all will be done is that as i was telling you that for the husband we do a semen analysis and husband mostly that would be enough if the semen analysis is normal we just tell them to stop smoking and nothing much would be required now for the female partner the blood investigation i have already told you thyroid plasma specifically on day 2 this is very very important day 2 fsh and lh may be done okay the point is that fsh lh ratio normally is 2 is to 1 okay remember 2 is to 1 and in pcos the ratio becomes ulta 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 3 okay so it's a very important point to be kept in mind and remember day 2 of the cycle day 2 or day 3 now what is day 1 whenever the menses start that is day 
So if today her menses starts, that's day one. Then tomorrow or day after tomorrow, on day two or day three, FHLH investigation should be done. Very important MCQ. Frequently asked in the entrance exam. Please keep in mind. This is an important MCQ. This is an important MCQ, and this is also an important MCQ. That I repeat, FHLH should always be done on day two or day three of the cycle. Okay. Normal ratio is two is to one. And in PCO, the ratio is inverted or ulta, one is to two or one is to three. Please keep all these points in mind. Okay, so now since also very high level, but just because if the age is 33 years, so the ovarian function. Okay, so FSH is one of the marker for ovarian reserve. FSH is also a marker for ovarian reserve, but a better is AMH, anti-mullerian hormone. AMH is a very good marker, one of the best markers for ovarian reserves. And AMH can be done any time of the menstrual cycle. Okay, it can be done any time of the cycle, not necessary on particular day. Okay, so this is again a very important MCQ. What is the meaning of ovarian reserve? Capacity of the ovary to produce eggs. Because as I was saying that she is 33 years, as the age will advance, 35, 36. So this is 33, not so much important. You may not want to do AMH directly. AMH also helps us with PCOS diagnosis. But if the age is definitely slightly on the higher side, say 37, 38 years, then definitely AMH investigation should be done. Okay, so this very very high level stuff. This is PG level stuff. Normally, students don't understand the meaning of ovarian reserve. Ovarian reserve means capacity of the ovary to produce eggs. Okay, that means what is your bank balance? So as your age is going to advance, as your age is going to advance, then the as your age as the patient's age is going to advance, the ovarian function keeps on becoming less 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 less. Okay, so this is the age. This is the ovarian function or the ovarian reserve. It's also called as diminished ovarian reserve. Okay, so this FSH is one of the marker, but the better marker is AMH, very important MCQ, uh, as likely to be asked in the future exams for sure. So AMH investigation should be done definitely if the age of the patient is on the higher side, 35, 36 years. Okay, so this much would be the blood investigations, then definitely, definitely, definitely we would like to do USG pelvis, yes, because for ultrasonography, you will come to know about lot of features about the ovaries how the ovaries are, whether is it having a polycystic pattern or whether it is having a multiple small follicles in the periphery that typically the necklace of pearl pattern. Again, a very important MCQ. So necklace of pearl pattern. Okay. And a transvaginal sonography is preferred. Transvaginal sonography is preferred because even uterine factors play a role. Even uterine factors play a role in your development uh, of infertility. So there could be a fibroid within the cavity, there could be a polyp, all that can be picked up on ultrasonography, any other uterine anomalies, fibroid polyp specifically. So a TVS pelvis will help us to find out if there's any pathology in the ovary as well as in the uterus. Today even 3D ultrasonography is available, 3D ultrasonography is very good to evaluate the cavity and then we should do the investigations for tubal patency. Okay, how the fallopian tubes are, how the fallopian tubes are, we can come to know by doing hysterosalpingography. This is an initial investigation because tubes have to be patent, tubes have to be patent. So, HSG can be done, that's another you know, investigations for tubal patency. Okay, you would see a triangle cavity and you will see a thin, bouncy, wavy tubes and the spill of the dye. Okay, this is called as the dye would fall in the pelvis, it's called spill of the dye. This would tell me that the patient's uh, fallopian tubes are normal or patent okay even uh, hsg's initial investigation that is always preferred if the patient is not conceiving after your treatment then even laparoscopy with chromoperturbation please keep this in mind laparoscopy chromoperturbation is the investigation which is done okay in you put in a telescope in the abdomen you do a laparoscopy along with that do chromoperturbation with methylene blue dye and then i can come to know whether the tubes are patent or not but this being a surgery is never the first line okay first line is always hsg considered laparoscopy is the gold standard for fallopian tube patency but because it is a it is a uh, surgery it is never the first line investigation so this is how you would systematically so far i repeat for husband a semen analysis would be done for females, for ovarian factor ultrasonography, FSH, AMH investigations, other blood investigation I have told you and for fallopian tube patency, we would like to do HSG and then we would try to find out what the problem is. If she is on the higher weight side, ask the patient to lose some weight and ovulatory disturbance would get corrected 
by treating thyroid and prolactin disorder. So this is just an overview of the investigations what you do for male and the female partner. Then you reach the diagnosis and then accordingly we can give the treatment to the patient. So PVS, uh, pelvis, ultrasonography, uterus, HSG for the fallopian tubes, blood test for the ovarian function and husband semen analysis. Okay, so this will give us a complete overview of what all is to be done for this patients of infertile couple. Okay, uh, operation NEAT PG batch has been launched from 20th of July. Please use my code BRPUNIT10 to get 10% off and this is a very good batch for all those who are planning for the NEAT PG. Okay, DRPUNIT10. In this, the best teachers of the country are coming together and there is going to be classes which is going to have theory part as well as MCQ discussion. Entire OBGY, I am going to cover it in the month of October and November for all of you including MCQ revision and uh, repeat, I request you to use this code DRPUNIT10 to get 10% off of various subscriptions, 3 months, 6 months, 1 year, 2 years are available. If you are a final year student, then you can even go for a 12 months to 1 year subscription of, uh, or even 2 year subscription depending on the requirement and DRPUNIT10 is the code uh, to get 10% off on the subscriptions. Thank you very much. Best of luck. I hope this lecture was informative to you and investigations in infertility.